Hi, this is Dr. Michael Ruscio, and let's discuss some exciting news. A study has confirmed that probiotics are helpful for both SIBO and for constipation. And this can be a very contentious issue regarding probiotics, especially in the realm of SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which can cause bowel irregularity, constipation, or diarrhea, or both, amongst other symptoms like abdominal discomfort, bloating, uh, and even reflux. Now, the backstory debate is some will tell you, you must not use probiotics if you have SIBO. And for many years, I've been trying to make people aware of the fact that while that was an early hypothesis from many, many years ago, there is now an overwhelming amount of data demonstrating that probiotics can effectively treat SIBO and many of the associated symptoms of IBS. So let's cover one data point that found that probiotics can improve both methane SIBO and constipation. Well, what is methane? Methane is released by this organism. It's similar to a bacteria known as an archaea. And these archaea, like Methanobreverbacter smithii, reduce methane. And methane has been shown to either associate to or cause constipation. In fact, a meta-analysis of over 1,200 individuals found a significant association between higher levels of methane and constipation. This is as assessed by a SIBO breath test. So the next question is, well, can probiotics help? Now, this study looked at 20 participants with constipation who all had high methane from a SIBO breath test. They were, they were given l uh, uh, what I would term a category one probiotic, a mixture of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium, in this case, just one species, the l ruteri, for one month, and then they were retested and their symptoms were reassessed. What did they find? There was reduced methane production from a positive level, 21 parts per million, down to a normal level, nine parts per million. This is good. This gives us one of those many data points finding probiotics can treat SIBO. Also, increased bowel frequency was documented. People on average move their bowels four times per week to six times per week. So people were essentially having a bowel movement every day of the week or maybe slightly less, which is great. And 55% of the subjects tested negative for methane. So there was a over 50% clearance rate for methane. And I've discussed in the podcast before that recent meta-analyses are showing that both probiotics and rifaximin have a similar efficacy or clearance rate for SIBO of roughly 50%. Now, what's interesting here is those who were found to be negative for methane had the largest improvements in their bowel movements. So again, all of this makes sense in terms of the methane associating to and even being causal to constipation. Now, you should ask yourself the question, as I always do when I read a new piece of science or hear a claim, eh, is this a cherry pick? Is this one study finding that probiotics help constipation or SIBO, yet there are seven studies demonstrating that probiotics do not help or maybe even make the condition worse? This is a great question. It is a question that should certainly be posed because unfortunately, cherry picking happens a lot in health education. And so let's look at a 2022 systematic review with meta-analysis, the pinnacle of scientific evidence in the evidence-based pyramid of 800 people with constipation. Compared to placebo, the probiotic group was found to have an improvement in constipation. So the, the nice thing about a meta-analysis is it's akin to a truth serum because a meta-analysis summarizes multiple data points. Multiple studies are summarized into a meta-analysis. So it makes cherry picking very difficult to do because 
for example, in this study, there may have been five constituent studies that summed up to the summary of the meta-analysis. So you can't cherry pick, let's say, the one of the five that found what I wanted to think, but rather you are forced to just you know admit the findings of the total body of the evidence or the trend in the data. So um, evidence here that this observation is not a cherry pick and there is good data to support that probiotics can improve constipation. Now I'm wondering, have you tried probiotics for constipation? If so, I'd be very curious to hear your comments and also I'll do my best to pepper in some responses that can lead people down the right path for how to use probiotics the right way to remedy constipation. One other thing here before I leave you I'd like to discuss is is methane causal or associative, right? Because there is this debate of methane and constipation, chicken or the egg. So it could be that probiotics increased bowel regularity and therefore reduced methane. Because we know that interventions that improve motility or improve regularity reduce methane. Because the slower stuff moves, the more methane accrues. Now conversely, and, and both of these mechanisms are at play, I should clarify, but the question is which one has a predominance in terms of its impact. Second pathway could be that probiotics reduce methane by treating the SIBO and therefore increase bowel motility. Now again, it's not all or none or one or the other in this absolutist framing. Both these mechanisms are at play. The question is which one is more important? And this is very pertinent because if you're confronted with multiple options for treating your constipation, you want to use the one that's gonna have the highest level of impact or the larger effect size. And it's more likely the second pathway here, the probiotics reducing the methane. And this is because probiotics actually have antimicrobial or antibacterial, fungal, and parasitic action. This is a really underappreciated facet of probiotics. And to quote the Journal of Digestive Diseases and Science, in those with constipation, neomycin, an antibiotic that can treat methane SIBO, was more effective in treating constipation in those with positive methane as compared to those who had no methane. So killing the methane bugs lowers methane levels leads to impre uh, improved bowel movements. Now, what if we could do that without an antibiotic, but we could use a probiotic? This would be even better, right? And so this is what I'm trying to showcase for you. So in close, bacterial and technically archaea, which make the methane, imbalances may be causing your constipation, and probiotics are one of many therapies that can help, and thankfully, probiotics are relatively inexpensive, and they're very safe, and they have multiple other health benefits. So this is Dr. Michael Ruscio, and I hope this helps you improve your regularity safely and effectively with probiotics.